call the meeting to yeah. order yeah. and do our roll call. 634. And roll call. Hatcherson? Present. Franklin? Present. Gasker? Present. Gilbert? Here. King? Virtually here. Walker? Here. All present. Okay, great. Um, first item for tonight is the approval of the agenda, and we actually, I know of one deletion, which is under old business, the number three, that was actually on last month's agenda, and we had talked about that and finalized, you know, how we were doing Zoom. So I'm not sure how it got there, but I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the minutes with that deletion, or with the agenda with that deletion. So moved by Lord Nickett and second by, well, John and Lisa about the same time. Well, John and Bill, let John have a second. <laughs> all right, yeah. yeah. We don't want them to feel hurt. And voice okay, okay, all? Yeah. And voice uh, vote. Oh, all in favor, aye. 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 All the same sign. All right, thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes of the April 6th meeting. You, it was attached to the agenda. Uh, I don't know if there's any corrections, additions, or if anyone has something. I'll move we approve. Okay, it's been moved by Joe Gaster to approve. Is there a second? Second by Nadine Franklin. Okay, we support all those in favor, approve in the minutes, that's saved. Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, Okay, thank you. And thank you, Joshua, for yeah. the minutes. It's all work on. Thanks for the defense. Um, I don't know. We, I know we have the Chronicle reporter here, but <laughs> we always want to make sure if you have any public participation to let us know. Oh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, good. Well, we're glad to see oh, you here. Though. We're glad to have you. Uh, okay, let's let's move on to old business. Um, we don't, uh, to my knowledge, under the police community relations, I don't believe we've got any uh, new updates or something. But um, one of the things that I had suggested talking with with uh, Josh was with the recent stuff with tasers and and you know. Uh, somebody speeds away in a car and yet they're shooting through the windows and stuff. I thought it might be a good time for us to find out, you know, what is again the, the, the department's policy on the use of tasers and then we can talk further about this. this how, how about, Larry, if uh, next time we can bring as part of your agenda we can show you what the SDs are and he can then you want to make a note of that yeah absolutely um, okay. the only thing i would add to that is that the police department did start a website that's new the cal city police department.com those those sops those standard operating procedures on use of force and taser are available to anyone that wants to look okay. they're from another country can look and see what locally we have as a policy. So that's of interest to think about, to ask questions to cheaper or to question policy. You can find it at the Cal City Police Department.com and bring it to our next meeting. Great. It would be helpful if we each had a chance between now and the lunch then to maybe come yeah. up with better questions. Yeah. You know, okay. for you. Please do the department.
And the, the other thing, if we had the, the new chief come, because of his background with the um, state police, I wonder if he'd be able to tell us more about the police training academy. Um, yeah, there, and there are multiple training academies. The yeah. ISB has several, and, uh, and uh, some other cities like the uh, Cal, there's others. Uh, I think I'd walk through that. Uh, right. you want to train, because he's most familiar with the ISP. Right. They have their sort of their own way to us. He might be pretty good deal because he's been involved in the last 11 months with a lot of
that the city would be okay with simply indicating that Northern Intel was requested that we simply reproduce it. I can show it to Scott Zach tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Put it someplace so that people just perusing a yeah. couple of yeah. yeah. And and I will I got a Facebook email back from the Tenants Association accepting me to be a member. <laughs> okay, now that may be an automated thing, but I will respond on this and at least update the business because if they've still got something going out on Facebook, which I haven't found yet, then it's great if they can, you know, announce this. How does the school of law intend on distributing this? When? Or how? Um, Are they going to post it in, in, in various departments? Are they going to. I, I don't know the full details on that. I know they're, um, they'll obviously use the, the, the university's electronic things that they're all part of. Uh, beyond that, are they going to pay for an ad in the newspaper? I don't know. Uh, I didn't think to ask that, but I wouldn't be surprised because there's no sense in having a law student be, for instance, this summer as an intern if you don't have some business for them. Yeah. Yeah. So I would expect them to do a little more policy. So we'll have to wait and see, though, on possible other kinds of services. Um, for the landlord tenant task group, uh, we met uh, on uh, April 22nd. Will, Mike, Gordon, and myself. And we basically got two things that I think we've agreed to try and tackle. Yes, maybe for the reporter. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, Will Heinish and uh, Mike uh, Pitsley. Uh, two local property owners, realtors, and landlords, so to speak. Um, we, we determined that there were probably two main things the group would like to do. The one is, as quickly as possible, just look at that possible changes to the actual Chapter 10 landlord tenant ordinance. And then the second was to try to put together a kind of first rough draft of a welcome packet for any new tenants. And this would be what this group had talked about in the last meetings, which is an abbreviated version of the handbook, something that would be uh, digestible, you know. Um, so we felt the handbook was just overwhelming. Yes. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Long. Right. So we did the initial review of Chapter 10 at the April 22nd meeting. I took notes on it all, and I have to now put them together. I'll send them out to the task group to make sure I captured it right. And then hopefully at the June meeting for us, we'll have you know something to do with that. Um, for the welcoming packet, that is our task for this Thursday's meet of the swamp. So okay. I think it's May 6th, which is Thursday. Oh, yeah. From from noon till uh, yeah. two o'clock. Yeah. I have a problem. Start with a welcoming 
relationship building kind of thing and eventually have that available and maybe even in a smaller size because the police officers could have them in their cars and whenever they're around those complexes or whatever if they are coming because there's a dispute or somebody's upset and it has anything to do with housing they, they've got that uh, document available it's a little much to be carrying around all the full handbook or you know that kind of stuff so anyway those are the thoughts that have gone behind everything and so i think we're we're forging ahead with, with those those tasks and larry I yeah mean, I, just interject. I think you and i are an hour we're still thinking that they have to get the final paper to back to the police car i think just have a little card to hand out uh, that has the web presence that all of a sudden you know takes people right to what they want to know yeah. and they can read as much or as little as that makes some sense there's a five by eight version of the handbook that's the 2013 version we, we did mention in the meeting compressing it down in that kind okay. of card so size that would be nice. it to hand out yeah you know larry if you have a chance to bring this up with uh, with that group you know down the road i would like to i would love to see um, some sort of collaboration maybe between our our city council members and some of our landlords that are interested in, in this and having these and having some sort of welcome events uh, organized by neighborhoods um, you know i live on Locust street and i don't I'm not, i don't have any complaints about that at all i live on Locust street right here first and if uh, you know, if I if I have a problem with people, you know, like half a block or kitty corner, you know, because they're blasting their stereos and they're having a really loud party on a, on a Saturday night, if I can walk across the street and say, George, could you turn it down a little bit mm -hmm. instead of calling the police department, mm -hmm. um, you know, or anybody else, mm -hmm. I, I I would like to see us encourage those kinds of opportunities where where if people are moving into student housing or wherever it is in apartments. Um, where they can interact with people that live next door or across the street from that is. I know that, um, and Gordon, you may remember more at our last the small group meeting, there was some discussion about some kind of welcoming thing. And I know at our last HRC meeting, I think it was Jim Mason that had said there ought to be some kind of welcoming party or all that stuff so yeah we'll I mean, if we know each other's names at least mm -hmm. i could say you know hello as we're taking in and bringing out the garbage mm -hmm. i think that makes life a lot easier mm -hmm. um, the only other thing i think under the landlord thing is i i don't know bill you know, if you want to tell us anything more than we've read in the papers about the hunter um, <laughs> thing or um, so are you still negotiating <laughs> well yeah i i uh i'm there will be, I, i'd love to but there there will be uh there will be moments where we can do that maybe uh yeah, <coughs> yeah i hopefully we have hey you know what i would like I would like for us or whoever or the paper, maybe you can pray that somebody needs to. There's more horrible property managers than other. I mean, they're, they're the worst. But it seems like, you know, people just like to read the paper and just talk about what they read in the paper instead of about what they know. So at some point, let's just, you know, say all the horrible, you know, property managers, God Lord. Because at this point, you know, everybody will be the radius of 601 with five no just by the first property so but let's not let the other you know let's not let the other landlords go unscathed because we're all have our focus attention on the other property everybody knows my daughter's 11 she knows so let's start so let's start you know making some sense of everything and not letting nobody go unscathed because a lot of because right now a lot of people are going unscathed because if you don't read the Northern Star you don't read the 
trying to build that, you get a huge you know, Yeah. Yes. No, good point. People just need different things, different yeah, people. Yeah. Good night. See, I think, um, well, that was unexpected. But I think I, I would say this, I'd say this for the newspaper or whoever. I think the work that the city's doing with companies like kind of property is absolutely essential because the kinds of people that are victimized are not going to be helped by any kind of a landlord tenant tenant. You know, if you're if you're if you're a college student, and you come out to the hill, and uh, you're reasonably well educated, and you can bring this home to mom and dad and say, Mom, Dad, what is this mean? If you've got some social capital, you can take advantage of a document like that. If you have no social capital, which is to say, you know, you work, you live in, a, you live somewhere in Chicago, and your building was taken over, and somebody said, uh, Well, we're, 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 we, we've got to relocate you somewhere. And we've got these properties. We've got these apartments out of the town. And, um, and you know, the schools are better than they are in Chicago. And um, it's safer. You know, you don't have to be so worried about your kids, you know, you know, joining a gang or being killed or something like that. So it sounds pretty good to me. So we have people coming now, here now, and uh, they find themselves in this impossible situation, let's say, in other properties. We can listen to landlords who say, well, you know, the ordinance is a written favor the tenants. You can get out of the lease, et cetera, et cetera. You know the waiting list is for Section 8 housing for a vacancy? Mm -hmm. You really think you can just walk out the door and walk into another apartment? Mm -hmm. Or the work that I've done in the past with people that live in those places, you know, that, that, uh, that are not in Section 8 housing, you know, people speak about, uh, what, you know, what's uh, the slang term of it is the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity is first month's rent, last month's rent, and first cost. If you've got, an, if you've got $2,400 in the bank, you can walk out of the lease. Because you can walk into the new place. If you don't, that's just nonsense. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's out of reach. I, I think it should be noted, I, I just listened to John in the last few meetings that matching his high speed to due process has been a bit of a challenge here. And I think he's always intentionally right. It's just a matter of coming together and, and 
matching his maybe longevity and his experience with this type of forum to what he sees and does out in the public. Uh, and, and so a due process, I think, is, is difficult for him, and it's difficult for tenants that are stuck in a circumstantial disability or they're under a bailer's virtual sure. when, it's, when it's tough for them. So, and, no, yeah. It's, I, I like to I like to say something if I may. Sure, uh, I've been here for a while, and I, I think that John's frustration is, um, you know, I think it's validated. I think he probably should have been supported. With it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to want things happen in a, in a, in a more rapid pace. I agree with him that there are other landlords that are not that, that are not the best, and we have not focused on any other group other than the hunter. <laughs> in that regard, I think it's fair. Um, I do think it sucks, particularly when you look at progress. And, and I'm speaking from the African American seat, right? So being an African American in, in this society, progress has always been slow for everything that needs to happen immediately with regard to the privileges that some people have versus other people. So in that regard, um, you know, I support them. And at the same time, I do understand that progress is slow. It moves like a turtle um, and like a, a snail. Mm -hmm. And that, that's frustrating in and of itself. But I think part of his frustration also was that he mentioned that he was at an event over the weekend. And I wasn't at the event either, but I heard about it. And there was nobody, I guess, that there was no city council people. So that's also frustrating when you have, you put in, you know, you go to your job, nine to five, then you put in time afterwards, and then you need the people that are elected to come and support those efforts so that you at least get the sense that we're all working on the same team. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a part of the John's frustration, frustration yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. is what I heard. Yeah. Um, and I think if, if we were to say, well, all the things that we did are kind of logistical things that will help long term, but they're not really you know, I don't know that anybody living in those properties now that their life is better than we started talking about this two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, that's, that's fair. I just want us to be able to see the full spectrum. And, you know, nobody likes to be kind of scolded and see other people frustrated. But I think that there's some, some value and some truth there. I just wanted to add that. Yeah. And, and, and I'm sorry I missed the, the event on, on, on Saturday, Lisa, but. Um, I'm not going to apologize for officiating at a wedding that was planned months ago. I don't think anybody's asking you to apologize, Joe. I'm just saying, understand that he was frustrated, and I think he, he has the right to be frustrated, and maybe he aimed it at you because of your comments, but you certainly are not the elected officials from the city that he was referring to. Well, I, I think your points are well taken. Um, it's a shame that uh, John is, is so frustrated. Um, uh, I, I think part of his, and I know he didn't probably mean this, but it comes across as an accusation to members of this group uh, and that, that like we're just a part of doing nothing. And I don't think that's the case. I certainly tried to, I emailed uh, John when he first came on board with the history of what the HRC has done in recent years. Um, it is not an easy task because we seem to constantly have to deal with almost the impossible. That's been going on in some way, shape, or form, whether it be for the city, whether it be for community, individuals, or groups, and we've all made a commitment to try to do something. And I feel very good and proud that this group has made an attempt, not in a accusatory fashion or overreaction, but knowing the community and bringing forth those ideas and what could possibly be done even though we're only advisory. 
which most people, which most police, excuse me, which most people, if you, as you, you and I both know, each of us have been on numerous committees, subcommittees, or whatever, and it's it's ad nauseum to be on some of them that can't get anything done. Um, so, uh, but I do think the group has done some things. Uh, it is never enough, and it's never fast enough. But I, I will, I do want to go on record as supporting this commission, its role, and the good thoughts, considerations, and actions that have been accomplished by this group. Um, and with that said, I'll take a moment of personal privilege. <laughs> um, as uh, my days with the HRC are numbered, um, I am no longer able to uh, spend the amount of time uh, taking care of my wife and things are somewhat deteriorating um, and um, so it's very likely although something could change but it's very likely that the june meeting would be my last um, i apologize to the group i've been trying to patch together <laughs> many things and uh it just it just like Tonight, if I couldn't have had my son leave Rockford early to get here in time, I, I wouldn't have been able to leave her alone. So um, I just want to let you know, and uh, I, I would imagine that with me leaving, because I know kind of dovetailing back to Joe, John rather. Um, it may help him to know that I might be exiting. Uh, because I know he's told me one-on-one, -on -one, if not at meetings, that we're just not getting anything done. So um, maybe that will be a help. So um, I don't know if anyone has any other business or maybe comments or anything. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I feel that uh, no, I so go ahead and then I'll follow you. Yeah, my, my, my comment is this. Um, it's unfortunate about your wife, Larry, and I'm sorry about it. You know, I love her and, and admire her, and she's been a tremendous resource when she was at the university for me, and I imagine that she's to your family. Yeah. And there's nothing that can take the place of uh, our loved ones. Um, with the same regard, I, I want to say that I don't. I don't comment for a personal attack toward you. Uh, I think no, I, sometimes I'm people sorry. are frustrated. I'm sorry? I said, no, I didn't take them tonight as such. This is I was referring to things earlier. Another meeting and, well, and it, it's not, I mean, it's it's not relevant right. for now. Well, it, it, it is in that I hope that John will come back and I hope that as a committee we can continue, or the commission will continue to meet, um, and we'll be able to take each other's perspectives into consideration. It's not going to change the way things happen, mm -hmm. but at least we'll be able to, to hear one another. Mm -hmm. So when I hear you say words like over overreacting and all of this, it makes me wonder, you know, how much credit you you or or attention you're give what he's experiencing because it's real for him. He's not done this as long as we have. And his, his experience is very different. Um, and I think that adds because that brings in another perspective and another voice to the table. I just hope, hope that we can all be um, kind and, and mindful of other people, particularly when they see it different from the way home. Because that, that's, what it, that's what it's a challenge. It's easy when we're all on the same page. But the challenge is when one person sees it one way and another person sees it another way. Um, and I, you know, I think John is a good guy that's really just trying to get things done and make things happen. 
and it is it's a process um and there are ways to, to manage that and so i think we can do better i'm sorry that you're leaving but i understand it in terms of you know your family yeah well thanks um i do not have anything else I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, can you hear me, Lisa? Can you hear me? I can now, yes. Can you hear me? I don't know. Can I do this? Is it yes, yes, yes. I have a low timer anyway, so okay. <laughs> Is that still playing? Okay. Yeah. I, I, uh, I think like everyone in this room, uh, lots of uh, Todd that is still this. Uh, I appreciate your comments, Lisa. And Larry, I, I uh, absolutely understand yours as well. And then uh, to your last point, which was sort of like a bombshell on bombshells, uh, I would say um, uh, we'll, we'll all take some time in the next month and think about all the things you've done for this commission over the years. And if you truly do decide that's the best course for your person, sideways I thought we went really to the heart of the matter and we talked about what it is that is how is our passion being expressed and how can we get it to be expressed in a way that, that serves a uh, the not equanimity and peaceful conversation but how how it reaches to the, the sense of injustice and frustration that is driving a lot of a lot of us and we all feel that we want to be here you want to be here so uh john is is uh at least point out to point it out uh, is is not well practiced in conversation about these things but every day he talks about them he lives them he acts them he engages people to try to do better things he engages young people older people and so so uh, i think we can pull all that back together again and as we go through some of these topics, uh, I think we should be sort of uh, accepting of, of some of the some uh, unorganized conversation, and, and I think it, it leads sometimes to insight and value that uh, we can. That I think that's my own point. Does that make sense to you, Lisa? It does, Bill, and I'm, I'm glad that you said it. Because I, I think it's true. That it, 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 it's a process. Again, it, it's a process. It's easy for John to see it and say it because when he's delivering gifts, he's, he's, when I give, I guess, right? He's saying that talking to people all the time about the conditions under which they live, and they don't all live under other property. And so he hears that. And that event that took place. It's just kind of the, the uh, Eddie Lynn North quote this weekend. So I'm sure he heard a lot. And you know, John's out there saying, yeah, hey, I'm the HIC, and we're trying to do what's going on, what's going on. But, so I, I, I get all of that. And I get the frustration there that you must be feeling going, hey, 
I've been doing this for how long? You don't know how much I've read, how many people I've talked to. I did, and I think that we're closer than we've ever been. But it's still, it's a process. And I think we still have to be just as patient with one another as we are with the, with the process and try to work through. And maybe today was just a rough day to done. I don't know what you did all day. And I don't talk to them. I don't know if you carry a bunch of big packages or what happened. Um, what stuff is going on at his house? Well, you know, we know what's going on with your wife, but we don't know what's going on at his house. I, I can speak and to I that, actually, speak. Lisa. I can speak to that. I saw him this morning. Say that again. I saw John on his route this morning. We talked about a couple of things. And he was very upset about how a person had been uh, uh, he thought, uh, uh, wrongly treated and, and, uh, and, and where, where that person was living. And uh, I won't get into specifics, but uh, he wanted to know, uh, in these circumstances, what could that person do? So he's asking me probing questions, and some of it had to do with the city could maybe help with, but a lot of it we couldn't. And, and he's learning, you know, where are the limits? So if the problem is systemic, what parts of the system are working for us, and what parts of the system could be working better? Does that make some sense? Yeah. So and what can he do? to help make that happen. I think he's, he's overflowing with desire to, to change. And he knows that uh, what he has done in the past has been very good. He's, he's focused on youth and, and through sports and organizing and all that. But now he's he's focused on other ways. So I'll, I'll stop. So thank you all for, for what you do. I appreciate it. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked about what, what was going on with us this Yeah, that's very helpful. I think that yeah. gives us a little bit more insight to where he is right now. Yeah. Because from morning to now, it's 6, 7 o'clock at night. That's a lot of time that we've been doing this. So thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, if there is no other business or comments or anything, I we got to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, moved by and seconded by Lisa. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 A